What's up, guys? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uniform circular motion, exactly what that means on a very, very basic level, okay? And the first thing we're going to look at is when we're in circular motion, this is an object that's just going to be traveling around in some sort of circular path, okay? Now, the reason it's going to be doing so can depend on a bunch of different factors. There could be, you know, a string with some tension pulling it in a circle, or maybe the friction from a roadway pulling it in a circle, or gravity pulling something in orbit, all right? There's going to be something that's keeping this object in motion. So when we say uniform circular motion, uniform circular motion, what we're saying is the object is moving at a constant speed in a circular path, in a. Okay, now there's a little bit of trickery here. And the reason I wrote this out is because I wanna highlight something. We see this right here, constant speed. Okay, now so far in kinematics, we've learned that constant speed, right, tells us no change in velocity. But this is not true for uniform circular motion. And here's why we know that acceleration is a change in velocity over time. And so far we've only changed the magnitude, but now we are going to change direction. Okay, so in kinematics, we went from four meters per second to two meters per second. That was a change in magnitude. But now with the constant change of motion or direction, we are going to say that an object in uniform circular motion is accelerating. So object circular motion is accelerating. Okay, and it's accelerating because of this net force. So we're going to look at the first formula that we're going to see from Newton's second law. We know that some sort of net force equals the mass of an object times the acceleration of an object. And that's for standard kinematics. But now if we want to alter that and we want to make that relevant to circular motion, I'm going to have a mass that's going to be traveling counterclockwise in a circle like this. Okay. It is going to have some net force that I'm going to call centripetal force. Okay, now centripetal in its sense means towards the center. So this FC is going to be pointed towards the center of the circle, and it is a net force, okay? FC is now going to equal M, and now we're going to have AC as well where AC is centripetal acceleration. So the same rules of Newton's second law are going to apply, but now we can put them in a sense of uniform circular motion. And that word centripetal pops up again. That means towards the center. So AC is also towards the center of a circle. FC and AC are always towards the center. That is super, super important. It does not matter if the cart is like, say over here, we will have, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll have FC and we'll also have AC, always towards the center. Right. Now, there's one more variable that we need to look at if I'm going to be moving in a circle, okay? Because we don't know how do we find what is this AC equal to. When we have an object moving in a circle, okay, I'll put that object right over here. That is some mass right here, M1. It is going to have an AC towards the center as well as FC. But this AC is going to be equal to the velocity squared over R, where R is the radius of the circle.
And that is going to be, you guys, in meters as always. So now we see that FC, some net force, is MAC. But AC is going to be V squared over R. So I could combine these into one uniform circular motion formula of FC equals M V squared over R. All right. And now you'll see that FC is directly related as the mass goes up. So does FC. But the greatest change in centripetal force is going to be this object here. So the real takeaways that we need to understand is FC is equal to some net force. Okay, you can't just go out and apply a centripetal force. You can't say, hey, you, can you put a centripetal force on that? This comes from something else. Comes from another force. All right, and we do loops later, we'll see that there'll be a bunch of different forces acting on objects in circles. Okay, we also need to know that in circular motion, an object and this is a huge one right here, is never in equilibrium. Okay, it's always accelerating because of that change in V. Now the V acting on this math, on this mass right here, is always going to be tangent to the circle. Okay, so we have some FC that's pointing this way, but some V that's pointing this way. And that's what's kind of, that resultant is kind of what's gonna make it go in that circular path, all right? So an object is never in equilibrium because of the changing direction of V. When the mass is over here, V is going to be tangent to the circle and then AC once again towards the center, all right? So that's what we need to know. Anything with the word centripetal, is towards the center, always centripetal force, centripetal acceleration. When they are gonna ask you for arrows or what direction is the net force acting, always towards the center, okay? So if I simplify this picture again, the one thing that we really need to know is that when I have a mass, let's say it's moving clockwise this time, the V points tangent to the circle and then FC and AC, they all point to the middle. And these will all be given and you'll see, um, but if you know that the FC is really a net force on its own force and that an object is never in equilibrium, meaning that the F net is never equal to zero because we have a given F net right here of FC, you'll be good to go. Any other questions or topics you guys need me to discuss, just leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.